So in this PowerPoint, we are going to focus on cholesterol lowering agent or cholesterol lowering medication or drugs. So anti uh, lipemic medication we use for treatment of atherosclerosis, right? So here we go, the cholesterol basically deposit in the body like triglyceride or low density lipoprotein or high density lipoprotein. So I said that cholesterol, one is called, I mean, LDL or HDL or intermediate density lipoprotein. So the two primary form of lipid in the blood, one is water soluble, okay, water soluble fat that must be bound to apolipoprotein and specify the lipid carrying protein. Lipoprotein is combination of triglyceride or cholesterol with apolipoprotein. So when lipoprotein bind with protein and carry out in the blood is called lipoprotein. So next here, showing the different type of lipoprotein, like low, very low density lipoprotein is called VLDL. The VLDL produced by the liver and they transport the lipid to the cell. The other one is called low density lipoprotein or LDL. The LDL is really dangerous for your heart because they transport the bad cholesterol from peripheral tissue to the lungs and causes atherosclerosis. And high density lipoprotein it is HDL. It is, they are good for the body. It is easy to remember H for high density lipoprotein, H for happy, happy for life, right? Why they are good? Because they transport bad cholesterol from heart to the periphery. But LDL carry the bad cholesterol from periphery to the heart and causes atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries, causes the blockening, right? So this is response for recycling of cholesterol, also known as good cholesterol. HDL is a good cholesterol, is the way. In this picture, showing the metabolism of cholesterol. So liver is the major organ where the cholesterol synthesis, right? One of the most important enzyme produced inside the liver is called HMG CoA reductase. So this is the major enzyme they can produce the cholesterol. But in this lecture, we are talking about the lipid lowering agent like statin or simvastatin, the statin basically HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. The statin stop the activities of HMG CoA reductase and HMG CoA does not formation the cholesterol in the body. They stop it by inhibiting HMG CoA reductase. So cholesterol and coronary artery disease. The risks of coronary artery 
are coronary heart disease in the patient with cholesterol level of 300 milligram per DL is the three or four times greater than that in the patient with the level less than 200 milligram per DL, right? So high cholesterol is a indicator of heart disease, coronary heart disease. Hyperlipidemia and the treatment guideline. First of all, anti-lipemic uh, uh, drugs or cholesterol lowering drugs are used to lower the lipid level, also used as an adjust with or to the diet habit. habit. So if you see your patient has a high cholesterol level, before to start the statin, we request them to modify their lifestyle, participate in the exercise, and dietary, change the dietary habit. If life modification, exercise, or dietary habit is not enough to control the cholesterol, then we switch the medication that reduce the cholesterol, like statin, or I mean cholesteramine or niacin. Drugs choose based on specific lipid profile on the patient. What are the other uh, information in hyperlipidemic treatment? All reasonable non-drug means of controlling blood cholesterol level by dietary habit or exercise. Hmm. So should be treated for at least six months and found if found to fail before the drug therapy is considered. But I said if dietary habit, life modification or exercise is not enough to control or to reduce the cholesterol level, then we switch in medication. Here showing the categories of lipid lowering agent. First one is called HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. Right, it is the broad name or type. HMG CoA reductase inhibitor, the major drugs is called statin. If when you go and buy the drugs statin, we can get so many variations like simvastatin, atovastatin, lovovastatin, rosovastatin, so many, right? The second one is called bile acid. Bile acid sequestrant. So bile acid sequestrant categorized again, cholestyramine or isetimab or gemfibrozil or niacin. These four medication together, we talk bile acid sequestrant. They reduce the bile, basically. And another category is called B, vitamin B, and it's called niacin or nicotinic acid. Let's see, vitamin B3, other name is nicotinic acid or niacin. We get the niacin in the onion. Or another category is called uh, fibric acid derivatives, fibrate, or cholesterol, absorption inhibitor, shortly called Jeta, uh, but it is real name is Azitimab. And some medications combinedly use. The most important, most 
common category are eccentric queer reductase, shortly called statin. The most popular low density lipoprotein reducer, right? So what are the different drugs names we used as a statin? Example, simvastatin, atobastatin, pavastatin, rosobastatin, so right? Different name or adicor. Now, showing what are the mechanism of action of atobastatin or statin? Some books say lipitor. So they inhibit the eccentric quail reductase, which is used by the liver to produce the cholesterol and lower the rate of cholesterol production because this is the enzyme in formation of the cholesterol. Could you think if anybody do not have cholesterol, there's so many chemical reaction will be stopped in the body. And we will not, the human being will not looking good without fat, without cholesterol. But everything has to be within limitation, not too much it good, right? So cholesterol is important for some chemical reaction. So first line drugs therapy for hypocholesterolemia, which is the ESNGQ, reductase inhibitor of statin is the first line of therapy drugs. Treatment for type 2A or 3B hyperlipidemia. Reduce the LDL level by 30%. Increase the HDL level by 2% and reduce the triglyceride. So give a focus to my friend. LDL is a bad cholesterol. Triglyceride is a bad cholesterol, but HDL is a good cholesterol. Our target, reduce the bad cholesterol, but increase the good cholesterol. Because HDL work as a scavenger, means they clear the heart, coronary arteries, and protect your heart. So, asymptic reductase inhibitor, when you prescribe to the patient, definitely we have to know what are the common side effects. What are the common side effects, I said. So, like they cause mild GI upset, Right, GI upset or GI disturbance means nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Some books say it, patient develop headache or rash. Most important point is here, the ascentic queridactis inhibitor or statin can cause muscle pain muscle pain or muscle breakdown. The muscle pain and muscle breakdown together is called myopathy. So when muscle breakdown means the muscle tissue broken up and then like striated muscle breakdown, and this is rhabdomyolysis. When muscle tissue break down, the broken tissue try to passing through the kidney and kidney does not allow to passing through and they causes the blockage of the kidney and causes acute failure, renal failure or kidney shutdown too, right? It's called rhabdomyolysis. Okay, so rhabdomyolysis or muscle pain is a myopathy. So myopathy is the most important side effect of 
ketobastatin or simvastatin. So if you prescribe the simvastatin or etovastatin to your patient, what you educate your patient? Like you prescribe this medication or doctor prescribe this medication, you are going to teach your patient, they waiting to say goodbye. That then you have supposed to tell during the course of the Statin, if you see your urine color is yellow or jaundice develop, or if you feel you if you feel you you have a right upper quadrant pain, dark color urine, come to doctor office, notify the your primary doctor because jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, dark urine. It is indicator of liver damage. So atovastatin or simvastatin can cause hepatotoxicity. So if patient have a hepatotoxicity, we easily can eva uh, evaluate it by liver function test. So if you check the liver function, elevated the liver enzyme, it indicate liver damage. So if you make shorter, what are the most two important side effect of ACNG reductase? One is myopathy, the other is liver damage or hepatotoxicity. So not only atovastatin or simvastatin, another anti-cholesterol anti or cholesterol lowering agent like azetimab or gamfibrozil, even niacin, all of them causes muscle pain or hepatotoxicity. Only one medication do not cause liver damage and this is called Colis, uh, colesterolam, um, or cholestyramine. What next? Next, a question: A patient with a a patient with a new prescription of ASNGQA reductase inhibitor or statin. So, in, drug is instructed to take medication with evening meal or at the bad time. The patient asks why it must be taken at the evening time. Okay, so basically the cholesterol deposit in the body at the night time. So if you take the medication at the evening time, they can reduce or inhibit the production of bad cholesterol. Choice A, the medication is better absorbed at the time. This time frame correlate better with the natural rhythm of cholesterol production and there will be fewer adverse effect if take at night. This timing reduces the incidence of myopathy. Answer is this one. If you take at the evening time, they help to correlate better with the rhythm of the cholesterol production, prevent the production. Second medication is called bile acid sequestrum, like cholestyramine or Cholesterol or also called bile acid binding resin. So, NCLEX board asks the question from here basically two medications one is the cholestyramine or cholesterol. These two. 
biolysis sequentrum mechanism of action. They prevent the reabsorption of biolysis from small intestine. They prevent the reabsorption because bile acid are necessary for absorption of cholesterol. So if no cholesterol, then inhibit the production of cholesterol. So when we use the bile acid sequestrin, when we use, I said, like if your patient have type two lipidemia, or if your patient have a liver damage or liver is already not working, all of the medication is called hepatotoxicity. Maybe this is safer for your patient. Relieve the pruritus associated with partial biliary obstruction, cholesterol basically. Maybe use along with other setting means combination therapy. What are the adverse effect of this group of drugs? They cause constipation, right? So cholesteramine or cholecephalum, both started by C and constipation started by C, right? Easy to remember, make a clue. And another one is called niacin. Niacin is a vitamin B3. Chemical name is called nicotinic acid. Nicotinic acid, I said. So the niacin lipid lowering, they have a lipid lowering properties and very effective, inexpensive, and often used in combination with other lipid lowering drugs, right? So, so thought to increase the activity of lipase, which breaks down the lipid and reduce the metabolism or catabolism of cholesterol, the mechanism of action of niacin. So when you give your patient niacin. So effective in lowering the triglyceride. So there are some, the patient has some, uh, there are a group of lipoprotein like triglyceride, LDL, HDL, BLDL. But if your patient has a triglyceride is more than upper limit, we can give them niacin or it the measure or the NCLEX board asks this question, niacin increase the HDL level. And we know HDL is a good for heart, right? So here effective in the treatment of type two, three, four and five or hyperlipidemia. The major side effect of niacin are flushing. It is called flushing in the face. So in this picture, you can see the this lady is blood supply increase in the face. Cutaneous blood supply increased in face, flushing of face. So flushing of face is side effect of niacin. Another side effect of niacin, they causes hyperglycemia. So if the medication can cause hyperglycemia, what you should treat your, um, what you have to tell your patient. You tell your patient, if your patient have a diabetic, tell them to monitor the blood sugar, blood sugar level. If blood sugar is increased, 
that times we have to adjust the insulin level. There are two more medication can cause the hyperglycemia. So niacin can cause hyperglycemia, right? Hyperglycemia, I said. The other medication is steroid. Steroid also causes hyperglycemia or loop diuretics. Loop diuretics like prusamide. So steroid, loop diuretics, or niacin can cause hyperglycemia. So as a RN or LPN, what you should educate your patient. You educate your patient strictly monitoring blood sugar level if they are hyperglycemic or diabetic patient. If the patient who take the stero uh, st uh, niacin or steroid or prusamide, chance of increase the hyperglycemia, so they have to adjust the insulin level. So other side effect of niacin are GI upset. GI upset means nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. So here I said niacin also can cause hepatotoxicity, right? Hepatotoxicity. So, at atobastatin or simbastatin also cause hepatotoxicity, or ezetimab can cause hepatotoxicity, or gamfri brazil can cause hepatotoxicity, and niacin can cause hepatotoxicity. Only one medication does not cause hepatotoxicity, they are cholesteramine or cholesterolam. So it is important for board exam. What next? Next is here a question. A patient will be taken nascent as part of the anti-lipemic um, anti lipemic therapy or anti-cholesterol lowering agents therapy. The best way to avoid the problem with flushing or pruritus, the best way, increase the dose slowly, right? Or start the dose with a low dose. Start with a low doses and then gradually increase the dose. Another medication we use as a cholesterol lowering agent is called fibric acid derivatives like gamfibrozil. Gamfibrozil. So, gamfibrozil, how to work? So they activate the lipids which break down the cholesterol. So if the cholesterol break down, cholesterol will not deposit in the body, right? So they also suppress the release of free fatty acid from adipose tissue and inhibit the synthesis of triglyceride in the liver. So when you, you prescribed your patient for Gamfree Brazil, right? When, if the treatment of type three, four or five hyperlipidemia, or if the fabric C diabetes like Gamfree Brazil or phenofibrate, 
decrease the triglyceride level and increase the HDL cholesterol level by as much as 25%. Easy way to remember we use this medication with other combination of lipid lowering agents, right? So game-free Brazil is good side, they increase the HDL, okay? Increase the good cholesterol in the body. Next, adverse effect. Abdominal discomfort, blood of vision, increase the risk of gallstone formation, prolonged post time, or liver study may show increase the enzyme level. So as like atobastatin or simbastatin or acetimab, they also cause muscle pain and hepatotoxicity. So if you go and check, we will check the liver enzyme is increased because their hepatotoxic effect, they have hepatotoxic effect. So now another um, important is here, the, Gamfri Brazil can cause gallstone. Easy way to remember the Gamfri Brazil started by Z, right? Z E M, G E M, Gamfri Brazil. And gallstone also started by Z, gallstone, right? So Gamfri Brazil. Goldstone, say side effect. And now, next here, they also other medication, it is, um, fibric acid derivatives like oral anticoagulant, statin, or some laboratory test reaction. And here, important note, we should know that the statin uh, or some interaction Berin, it is the sum of the note we have to know um, because as the LPN or RN, when we teach or give the medication, we should know that the interaction, drug interaction, right? So the statin, if you you if you have if you have if you have to give the statin for your patient you have to make sure patients are not pregnant. So statin are the contraindicated in pregnancy, right? Also the risk for myositis or myalgias or rhabdomyolysis increase, right? So if oral anticoagulant and statin not together, if your patient is pregnant, do not give statin. Tell your patient, take this medication at the night and also avoid the grapes fruit juice, right? And when we prescribe this medication, always need to monitor the liver function test, right? Or if you give the statin, tell your patient, or give 30 minutes before the food, 30 minutes before lunch or dinner. There's some note about the acetimab. So acetimab can cause hepatotoxicity. So if your patient has to uh, should take acetimab regularly, 
we should monitoring the liver function and also CK level. CK means creatinine kinase. Let me read it. Inhibit the absorption of cholesterol and related steroid. Reduce, in, re, reduce the total cholesterol. Also increase the LDL level, often combined with the statin drugs. Some herbal product like garlic used as an antispasmodic or anti-hypertensive anti uh, platelet or lipid reducer. So garlic is a herbal medication and they have some property to reduce your high blood pressure or they work as a blood thinner, right? Adverse effect, they cause dermatitis or vomiting, diarrhea or flatulence. So antiplatelet activity. So if your patient have any kind of surgical need to surgical operation, we do not give garlic because they have antiplatelet activities at least two weeks before or at least seven days before, we should stop the garlic and then go for surgical operation. Garlic also interact with blood thinner like warfarin and increase the bleeding time. Diazepam, they react with diazepam as well or may increase the bleeding when take with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. A patient, a, question, a patient want to take garlic tab to improve his cholesterol, which condition would be contraindicated? Definitely schedule for surgery. Any operation, we have to stop the garlic at least two or three weeks before. So another medication, a uh, little bit information here about them. Let me show you. 